Jesus and bless the name of Jesus. Ele kabarataya, ele marata la balakataya. Let the lifting up of your hands be like an evening sacrifice. Ele kabarakataya. He's the reason that we've come. Ele mana, we worship you, Jesus. Hey, kalamana solara bana kataya. Ele mana, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, I don't know, we worship you, Jesus. Ele mana sola kabala hatala mana kataya. Come on, in your own language, in your own tongue. Release the fruit of your lips this evening. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hey, Kanamana Solata. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Elemanda Sataya. Mighty deliverer, we worship you, Jesus. Alamarataya. You alone deserve my worship. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve the honor. So we lift you high. Hey. Hey. <laughs> we lift you high. Alemanda <laughs> Sotaya. Yahweh the life giver, Yahweh the life giver, Yahweh my 
Where's your joy one? Where's your joy two, Asha? Where's your joy three? Where's your joy four? Where's your joy? Where's your joy six? Where's your joy? Everybody, I know my master. Let the master. Yeah. Set the master and just now. Set yourself loose. Set yourself loose on my shoulder. Some of us who have been drunk from Sunday, we can never recover. So if you're still maintaining your teeth, you need to love in the spirit. Come on.
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Are you glad to be in church? Did you come with your joy? I said, did you come with your joy? See, I've got joy one, joy two, joy three, joy four, joy... Did you come with your joy? Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you tonight. Thank you for what you are going to bring to us tonight as light and revelation. We thank you for this season. How many of you know that God has been good to us? As a house. You know. Um, God has been good. God has really been good. I know that uh, there are people at different levels of their faith believing God for things. But really, if I will be permitted to just check where you are in the light of what is going around, God has been good to you. He's come through for you. He has come through for you. How many of you know you cross some mountains and it was by God? God has been good to you. I just needed to remind you because the Bible says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not. Forget not. Forget not. I refuse to forget. I refuse to forget. And that's why I told you, in case you are losing your joy, it means you need to stir up your gratitude. I say you need to stir up your gratitude. I want to give you two minutes of just glorifying the name of the Lord, your home way, without, whether with a shout, a song, a dance, a jump, a run, a scream, Whatever will suit you, just give him praise. God has been good to you. God has been good to you. God has been good. God has been good. Shaka bala bala. Hey. Hey. I said, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Hey! Then speak to God for his unspeakable gift. The unspeakable gift of God. The unspeakable gift of God. Yay! I just, I just want to remind you that if the Father says, when you give with your right and your left hand, supposed, supposed not to know, then it appears that if he's your father and he's our father, and we should do like he does, the ones you know, I said, the ones you know, the things you're even thinking you're thanking God for now, can't be compared to the hidden things. Let me come to somebody. You thought you knew where you should praise God, but I want you to thank him because you are ignorant of why you should praise God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That you are ignorant of so many reasons. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. You know, I wish I could just bet a song tonight. And if, if, if there is a phrase I would love to bring you, it's a, you know, that, that phrase just hits me in my spirit. That is, thank you for always. <laughs> you know. You <laughs> know. Woo! 
Lord, we thank you. We give you praise this night. We know that you have a plan for this meeting. And we align our heart to receive. Our ears are blessed to hear. Our eyes are blessed to see. Our hearts are anointed to understand. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift up our right hands in the name of Jesus. So my understanding. After the light, I receive with meekness. The engrafted word of God. And I am changed and, trans and transformed by the mystery of God's word. If you believe I see a pathway, amen. Yeah. Amen and amen. Can I have your seat? So I was in my study on Saturday or Sunday, and the Lord said to me, this Saturday or Sunday or yesterday, I can't really remember obviously, but I guess it was Sunday or early, early, early in the morning on Monday. And um, can we have a good time to be with you? And the Lord said to me, Miracles and principles. I said, well, um, we, we, we talked about that on Tuesday. So yeah, you need to go and talk about it again. And the reason is because the life of a believer optimizing the possibility in that life has to do with that topic, miracles and principles. And if there's a reason why God demanded that I should come back to teach it, it's because of one word, just one word, three-letter word. Miracles hand principle. God said, go and emphasize the fact that it is miracle, miracles and principle. The fact that the hand is very important. The conjunction is very important. You know, it amazes me what God points out that can bet a seed. If a teacher of God's word, B-U-T, bot, can start three weeks series for you. It's an anointing to see what maybe people would not ordinarily see. Now, when the Lord began to talk to me, I understood what he was saying because sometimes we have um, some sort of people who believe in principles at the expense of miracles. And some people believe in miracles without really engaging themselves in working out principles. And so it's almost like some people believe that the life of a believer is a life of principles. And to an extent, there are results to show that they may be right. And then you get to some other set of people, and then it appears they believe the Christian life is a life of miracles. As opposed to others who believe it's a life of principles. And to an extent, they have some results to show that they may be correct. The only challenge here is that they might not have the opportunity to optimize the blessings of the Lord. The life of a believer is not miracle or principles. You don't have to choose between miracles and principles. You don't have to be for hidden miracles or principles. You have to understand that God wanted you and I to live with the two together. For God, for example, it's always that when God does a thing because it dwells in the realm of the supernatural, for those of us on this side of eternity, it is seen or manifested to us as miracles. But God, having done it, shows how it can be repeated and the ability to repeat a thing with an assurance that the same result can be gotten is determined by principles. So, for example, 
Jesus, for example, multiplied bread twice. And he did it just the same way. So it means that from what we saw Jesus did, we can capture principles of multiplication. So when God does a miracle, God doesn't just want it to end with him. And so we just say, you know, it's just God that can do that. And so that which he has done, and I'm talking, when I'm talking about principles, I'm talking about both scriptural principles and scientific principles. You understand what I'm talking about? For us, particularly scriptural principles. Now, for example, how do you multiply things in your life? The scriptural principles. No science can probably justify this as, as far as I'm concerned. That you look at your store, you look at that thing that is not enough, and you begin to praise God over it. And over time, there is a multiplication. And, and this is not just things that we saw in the life of Jesus. There were things, this, for example, is a thing prophesied by the prophet in Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. Let me just read that to you quickly. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. You see what I'm talking about. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 30, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply. Multiply. So it seems there is a supernatural force of multiplication, multiplication anywhere the voice of thanksgiving is produced. So Jesus took that, blessed the Father, or blessed what I'm, the word blessed, that means he gave thanks, all right, on the food. You know, some of us, when we want to bless our food, come and eat for, oh Lord, for Christ's sake, amen. Yeah, that's not blessing your food. To bless the food is to give thanks over that food. That's what it means. Yeah. And every time you see, even Timothy, or Paul, saying Timothy, that if you receive anything so far, you give thanks over it. It is, it is clean, it is accepted. So, Please read that in context. So you don't go and just collect anything and say, I'm giving thanks over it. You understand what I'm talking about? So what I'm saying here is, so it has become a principle that, humanly speaking, your temptation will be that when something is being exhausted, you want to complain, you want to run into fear, but instead of that, you decide to give thanks. And you give thanks, and you give thanks, and you watch that thing multiply. Now, where will you get that from? Principles, scriptural principles. All right? Now, why am I saying this? For God, when he does a thing, in that very thing are principles that allows you to replicate what you call the miracles. All right? So, principles put miracles or what you enjoy in miracles in autopilot. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, for him to go back to the realm of the miraculous again, it must have been that for one reason or another, the principle, especially scientific principle now, all right, is, is talked, is limited. Is limited. All right, it's miracle that a woman can receive a seed of a man. And she carries that seed for nine months and bones. I mean, these are just fluids that mix together. And from fluids that mix together, you have bones, skull, muscles, organs formed together. But that didn't happen unless there was a principle of reproduction that went into play. So what I'm trying to say is this. Having created the first man, God inserted principle such that what he did by miracle can now keep going by principle. Am I making sense here? Yeah. So for us as believers, our life is not miracles or principles. Our life is miracles and principles. Principles and miracles. And so for God, God moves from miracles to principles. When God creates a miracle, created the whole earth, created a miracle, then he put principle into it, to continue the walk, to continue the journey. You plant, you spoke tree into being, but the other set or generation of trees are not spoken, they are planted. Because in what was spoken, you put a seed that allows for principle such that now what you do by planting seed will generate the same thing it did by spoken words. 
Are you following me here? Very key. So for the life of a believer, we live both principle and miracles. And I feel I should say it again and again. Principles and miracles. Principles are not disadvantages or, uh, or, or limitations to you working in miracles. But they are your justification to need miracles. In other words, having done all you should do, and all you should do is not enough, you have not come to the end of yourself, because now you have hope in this world that other people without God does not have. Are you following me here? If I get to me, say a powerful amen. Again, I saw in Jesus, Jesus raised the dead, and he said, give them food. Give them food. Having raised the dead, you say, give them food. Why should you give them food? Because the guy who is dead must have been short of glucose for some hours. And if you leave him without glucose for hours, the brain can shut down again and then you go back to stage one. But God, having raised him back to dead, miracles, now we say by principle, keep him alive. And I'm trying to say this to you, that as a believer, you hold it to yourself to be faithful with principles, but also live in expectation for miracles. And the good thing is this. One of us also at the advantage of miracles is this, that miracles can amplify the result that principles can get. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Miracles. You see that in... Um, Isaac, Genesis 26, 27, I think 26, there was famine in the land, famine in the land. And then the guy sowed in that land. And I guess this famine was caused by absence of rain. How did I know? Jake, I mean, Joe, I mean, Isaac went back digging the wells that were dug in his father's days. That means he was in search of water and there was fight, they fought on each of those wells he saw until he found one that he named Rehoboth. And so, the Bible says, that same year where he sowed and planted, he became a mighty man, he grew, he went forward, grew, and blew some left, right, and center, and, and all of that. And of course, it was God that made him blossom. All right, he read and read, read brother, an hundredfold. An hundredfold is not hundred percent. Hello? I hope you know that. And hundred fold is not hundred percent is times two. That's hundred percent. He didn't reap hundred percent. He didn't reap double of what he planted. Are you listening to me? He reaped what he planted, raised in the power of hundred. Now that is supernatural, but he followed the principle. He got water to wet what he planted. You see what I'm talking about here? So even though he followed principle, the blessing of God upon him expanded what he has done so much so that he got results beyond what principle will have handed to him. Am I making sense here? So if you are a professional, like say a lawyer, you do your homework as a lawyer, you go to law school, get a good degree, all right, start your own, what do you call it now, um, law firm, yes, and then down the line, you must follow the principle that makes for success in that profession. But even people in that profession now knows that it's not enough for you to be able to blow grammar to win a case. Spirit must help you. Now, that's what I'm saying. All right, some trust in chariots and in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord. The man who trusts in the name of the Lord we will not wear, walk barefooted to the battleground. He will still go on chariot. But his trust is not on the chariots. His trust is in the Lord. What I'm trying to say to you today 
is that though you are a man who looks up to God, you still go to the battlefield with every other meeting on the same platform and level, only that they don't know something beyond you is backing you up. So that, are you following me here now? But this is the challenge. You don't want to go on horses and chariots. You have a disadvantage of speed already. Sit down. All right. But you want God, you know, you, you're just praying. You're just praying, Lord, Lord, this battle, Lord, this battle. And God says, okay, no problem. Why don't you do all you can and let me do all I need to do? Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but will remember the name of the Lord. But they that remember the name of the Lord will not walk, walk there barefooted. They will also go on chariots. You also speak the language. You also talk like a professional. But your strength is not in the things or the limits of what, what you need to do or what expected to do is. Are you following what I'm talking about? You still believe beyond that. That there is a God that can enlarge your steps. There's a God that can expand your possibilities. And that's what we call it. See, and this is where, um, this is the power of understanding when you know what it means for you as a believer to walk in the supernatural. Because there's a temptation for you to think that because you are not a pastor, there is no room for the supernatural in your own profession. Because for me, I speak all the language I have to speak in my assignment is Bible-based. Basically. I have to preach from you. Okay, I speak in English. Maybe I need to read more grammatical books and all of that. But basically, to communicate, my assignment is to communicate the Bible. So the greatest test, the greatest tool that I need is the Bible. But if you're a lawyer, you don't just read the Bible. If you're a businessman, you don't just read the Bible because you have to communicate in the vocabulary of that field. Am I making sense here? But you have to understand that even though they are hearing the vocabulary of your field, all right, the energy behind that words are not natural. They are not natural. If you are getting me, say powerful amen. amen. Say it's miracles and principles. It's not miracles or principles. Say again, it's not miracles or principles. Say it's miracles and principles. So, we're going to look at some couple of scriptures. Are you good? Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 17. And verse 8 to 13. I'm trying to say to you, for example, as a student, you read your book, you write your exams, but there are factors behind you between the time you write your exam and the time it is pasted that you don't have power over. The mood of your lecturer, the rat in your lecturer's office. The policy of your department. So there's one with an outstretched hand. In whose hand you trust. Who can walk behind the scene. But your desperation for the miracle is not because you are not responsible in your own duty. Are, are we together? Look at it, and the Amalekite, Amalek rather, um, and then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Now, let me explain what happened here. The children of Israel just crossed the Red Sea. They were a new, just battered nation. Primarily, they were slaves for over 400 years or thereabout. And the first experience they're going to have of a war, because they didn't fight the Egyptians, the ocean, the sea opened up. Now, that's a miracle, right? Was there any other alternative they could have taken? No. So the only thing that could take them over at that time is what? Miracles. Now, the one who came with principles on horses and chariots but don't have access to miracles perish at the point principles ended. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's just an example. That means 
Babe, can you drop your tab? Both of us are going now. Both of us are going now. And listen, another person is with us. And then we come to a bridge. We come to an ocean. He doesn't have what it takes to cross because all he has is principles. And then by human standard, we turn back and say, there's nothing anybody can do here. But those of us who trust in the Lord, we didn't come in the trust in the trust of chariots and horses, can now expect the wind of God to open the Red Sea and will pass through. And because we pass through, we have an ability to get results that this other man cannot get. That gives us influence. Don't forget where we are coming from. So they say there is a guy, he always gets results. Even when other people think it is impossible, that's the guy to go for. Now, what gave you the advantage is because having got it to the end of principles, you know there's some that can take you beyond that and you don't have to turn back in shame and say, well, well, see, I'm trying to say to you that where men give up should be your starting point. Listen, are you following what I'm talking about? When men say this is the end, it can <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? That should be your starting point. Because there's an advantage. There is an advantage for a child of God. There's an advantage for a child of God. Pastor Tayo was supposed, was this story I was sharing last week? Did I share it? He was supposed to go for an interview. They told him he wasn't qualified for an interview. He was supposed to be qualified. He was employed September 1, all right, 2020, 21. But because of COVID, his certificate was not ready. So, 2020. So, um, it took another seven days for him to prove that he had graduated, uh, he has finished his PhD. So then they returned the letter, and on that letter, now it's now September 8th. Or put back October 7th. So, almost it's a boy. So, I said, now, now, he was supposed to sit for an interview, but if he was to follow the previous letter they gave him, he should qualify for that interview. But now, because they changed the date just to test, to check if his certificate was correct or valid, he couldn't, they said he's not qualified. So just like, how many, what's the difference? Seven days. And so, naturally speaking, he has to wait, because the, 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 the conclusion of the promotion test or whatever has been passed to the highest institution in the organization. They just need to take it to the council for approval. Now, any human being, no matter how much you try, these people are actually following the book. They are following the book. I mean, even if it's one day, they are following the book. Now, for us as believers, sometimes we get... We, 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 we want to enter prejudice when people follow the book. Meanwhile, the issue should not be prejudice. The issue should be, should be that you desire miracles. Because that's just principles. If you had not, you have not, you, they, they had no reason to collect that, that letter from you. We wouldn't need to be praying to God. It's just that it was just that I was qualified for a promotion. I want to thank God I was qualified for a promotion. And they all gave me a promotion. I only was like, no, I say glory to God. He was qualified. All right. But by the book, that seven days was valid. But then, and which means no matter who you are, because you didn't meet up for that seven days, come back next year. But then, miracles took over. He didn't put his trust in chariots. He didn't put his horse in horses, even though chariots and horses were the qualification for the promotion. Am I making sense here? Then God bypassed the rector of that institution and went to the council. And they were just giving a report and saying, you know, um, concerning promotion, actually, how many people were qualified for promotion? 20 something, but for the, we have to drop two because one particular, they said, so they just, they just gave it, okay, they have to drop two. Then the people said, why do you have dropped the two, the two people? They said, oh, actually, one. Um, it's late by seven days. So, and then in the council, say, why will you delay another month just because of seven days? He has to wait next year. He doesn't know anybody in the council except one person in the council. Yeah. Yeah. How of you know that person? You know that person. Yeah. There is somebody speaking for you in the boardroom. Is the invisible participator in the boardroom? Are you listening to me? 
if principle fails, that is not the end. He could have given up and said, no, but the word of God came to him and he believed it. And I know in his rational mind, he does not know it will happen. And I always told you, let God factor him out. You see that? Men, he would, you would have lost that promotion if you got offended the people that sat at the panel because they were doing their job. Listen, never fight people because at their own point, they were not the people sent to favor you. They were not just sent. And it is good. Because you have nobody in that panel for, that sat for, uh, your, 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 to worship among them. So, let me come back here. Please set the time off. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim, the next verse. I just want to bring examples of scriptures, miracles, and you see how these two are interconnected. Let me pick Pastor Maya for example. Now, particular somebody, I won't mention the details, who insisted that he was going to deal with Pastor Maya and she wasn't going to graduate as a medical student. So in the final year, the person was in the place where she was taking a horror exam and make sure that she was marked down. So she had to fail. And, I mean, it's not something he did. All right, it was some noise. It, it was a bit noisy. Some people said, go and beg the man. All right, so I can let you graduate. They said, no, let you graduate. Okay, no problem. So they told us after the first time, we began to pray. So when they're going to do the receipts, because they will give you a point to re- write the exam before the final whatever. I don't even know she's a doctor. So you understand the exam I'm talking about. So... They were in the exam hall. Then one old professor who doesn't come to work suddenly show up. He doesn't come. I mean, he was not supposed to be there by every standard. He's an elderly man. That whatever you say, <clears throat> none of them, they are, there, they are, there, they are there, you know. When he said, they don't burn you where to talk. <laughs> That's the kind of professor that showed up. Wait, and the professor, what's happening? He said, we are trying to take exam of the people who receive. He said, you don't punish people twice. Now pass all of them, let them go. <laughs> I'm trying to say that while you follow principle, be miracle-minded. Are you listening to me here? Now, in her own mind, she, she couldn't have gone to raise that professor. Please come and beg for me. She couldn't have bribed the man. How much do you want to pay that man? And that man, he has seen everything. Some people are living their last part of their life just for you. They just have one role to play at a particular time. Didn't it happen in the Bible that there was a prophet that was alive just to see, 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 the, see Jesus being dedicated in the temple? That, that's why they are still alive. That the day you will need favor, and say, oh, oh, mommy, and they know you from nowhere. Please, are you, are you with me here today? Have you seen? And Moses said unto Joshua, Joshua, choose us out of out men and go. Now, choose out men simply means they didn't take all the men. So that means they looked and they were choosing the best of their men. Notice they were all slaves. Now, how do you bring slaves to a battle? How do you bring slaves to face an army? In mind, mind you, the mindedness of a, of a slave to confront an army. Just think about it. <laughs> it says that Moses said unto Joshua, choose out men and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. You will hold the sword of men, I will hold the rod of God. In the same battle, there are two realms. No, there are, two, there are two events on the same battleground. <laughs> the next verse. Look at the next verse. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalekites. If you were in the warfare, warfare, warfare front, you see Joshua using sword. See Joshua, see, see just to, all those names. 
I won't mention the name. Oh, but just to Joshua, those two names, you know, they look alike. And you hear, pa, 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 pa. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with America. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill, and it came to pass when Joshua's hand went down. When Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. In other words, when the law of the spirits, when you engage the law of the miraculous, you empower the principles to continually produce results. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do, do, do you understand what I'm talking about? I know you have fasted and prayed, but you still have to go and bid for that contract. And you're going to do it so well. But beyond doing it so well, you also have to understand that some people didn't come with grammar like you did. Say, they also came with spirits. But you're going to be like Elisha. You say, they that be with us, I'm not that they that be with big. Are you following what I'm talking about? I mean, the Amalekites will have been shocked. How did we face slaves and they beat us hands down? So, if you were with Moses, you will have a narrative. If you were with Joshua, you have a narrative. So, people with Joshua say, oh, that was the time. The battle was going like this, and, this, and suddenly, ah, all of us were tired. We just don't know what happened. We just continue fighting and fighting and fighting. Maybe the Amalekites, that's the story we tell their king. Those guys, they were already, like, we're going to, we just saw a mistake. We want to cut them down like this. Then suddenly, they, their strength just came back. They must have taken strong ego. <laughs> then the other guy will say, Kini, that we will raise the rod like this. You know, when God looks, he will say, why were you raising the rod? Or let me say, the sword kept working because you were raising the rod. The beautiful thing is this. The raising of rod may never be known by multitudes, but few. Let the mystery of your, let the secret of your success be mysterious. Because they should be able to say, he does what we do. He speaks what we, we say, what we say. But how come he get results we don't get? Miracles and principles. Hallelujah. You know, God told Moses, make sure you build the ark according to the pattern I showed unto you on the mountain. So he has, seen, he has seen a pattern. That seeing a pattern on the mountain, that's supernatural. But then you still need skills and human material to build what is supernatural. That is collaboration of principles and miracles. Yeah. It's just like God will show you something supernatural, but you need something among men to build what is supernatural. I was talking, let me just say this in person. And the type of people who judge churches that do these things. But you must know where the limit is. Especially when you are going to betray your nature as believer. All of you that are in Bible study today, I want to assume 90% of you are serious believers. If I ask you right now to open your phone, about 90% of people on your phone are serious believers. If we want to grow this church, you are not the best option to use to get this church. Because the people closer to you if they are serious believers, they should be planted in a solid church. The only option we have is to send you to the streets to go and win souls. An average number of people you win on the street haven't gotten them say, we tell you, I have my church. If you grow a church, you can only grow a church with two set of people. 
the unchurched, unsaved, or the un immature. If anybody comes to this church and says, why did you start coming to NLCC? I like the word they are preaching there. He's a good believer before he came. You are not ready for this conversation. <laughs> Principle, we say, sit down. What did Jesus call so winning? He says, fish catching. No fish is really caught until something attracts it. Don't worry, we'll talk about it later. No, let's talk about it today. So as I was saying, <laughs> so imagine I, I, I declare there's a special service, after service, there will be games, Ludo games, fresh hot pop off. Yes. after service. Drama and special ministration by Alabaster. I like, I like when you start like a, eh, eh. <laughs> Do it well, do it well. Joy one. <laughs> sit down, sit down. You know, I, some people who like excitement would come to church. And they are better off in church than on the street that Sunday. They are in a better place that Sunday. They are in a better place that Sunday. I said they are in a better place that Sunday. So question, where is the place of the supernatural? I'm principle there. In principle, I understand the kind of people I'm trying to reach out to. And I come to their level to get them. In prayer, I'm saying as they come, Every word in my mouth touched their heart. Why they were coming, they were coming for pop off. Me that they are coming to meet, I'm coming to win their soul. Yeah. All of us have different ambitions and we must achieve it. Yeah. Or else, we are not ready to win the world. Though. Yeah. If I ask Pastor Dutton, bring 10 people to church this year. All right. He will sweat. Most of his friends are tongue talking. Sapa <laughs> Radabaya. How did Nicodemus find salvation? He came to look. He did come to hear. He, came, he wanted to see. He just came to look. While he was busy looking, found salvation caught him. He, he, he was shocked that Jesus would call his name. That was not the idea. The idea was not that Jesus would call his name. The idea is that I just want to look. I just want to see this guy, and I'm too sure. Let me just climb a tree. Hey. Jesus said, today, salvation has come to your house. How the thought of the man that God will catch by salvation might look far away from the intention of God but we still position him to do what God needed to do in his life. Because if you don't renew your mind to these things, you will think those who are trying to do all kinds of things just to get people to church. The only set of you they can get to church are unbelievers. They are, they are babes. The question is when they come to church, what, did they, what happened to them? That's the question. You know, early in those days, I don't believe in drama in church. I discovered that I was having church for my own level of maturity, not for the people that God has called me to grow. So I have to come back. In fact, I don't, when we started this church, we don't do that every church, that church Sunday in this church. Lift your hands everywhere. The way, when I, I said, very soon, you'll be the only one worshiping in this church. <laughs> because you have conditioned this church to what you like, yeah. not to whom you are sent. Yeah. And you see, such churches, they are bragging. We in our church, we've spent three hours hearing God's word. An unbeliever, if, that means there's no baby in your church. No baby has enough patience to sit down for three hours. We are doing three hours Bible study. Exegesis, three hours. 
We, we, all of us, we have three Bibles. We bring, we bring our amplified, our message. Our... Even God will be shaking his head to your foolishness. When he's among the multitude, he's speaking parable. When he's among the disciples, he teaches them. He shows them the mysteries of the kingdom, which means there are conversations based on congregations. So there are things I'm sharing now, here, I will share on Sunday morning. There are things I will share in school of ministry, I won't share here. There are things I will share in leadership, because I'm liberating those of you in ministry. There are things God is putting in your heart, but you're like, hey, how would you think? Pastor, I just liberated you. Look at the scripture. This is verse one, Psalm one twenty seven and verse one. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Question: Who built it? Who built the house? Are you sure? If what you will do as a builder will not be in vain, God must be building the realm of the spirit. Because God God doesn't build with blocks. He builds with words. Miracles. And principles. You don't have to choose between miracle and... You you don't have to be... Is it miracle? Are you on the side of miracle or on the side of principles? No. The two can go together. And they should go together. So a guy said, Lord, except you build this, they build it, Lord. And God said, I have built it. But where is it? You have not built it. Whatever God has built must still be built by men. When God shows you that big ministry, big business, that's what he has built. But what you will see is what you build out of what he has built. And if you refuse to build anything, because in the realm of this forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled. In the realm of this, some of you will get to heaven to see the things you have you never had in your hand. That's why the greatest prayer you can have, you can make for yourself, is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Light to see what has been made happen so that you can make it happen here on time. In time. Are, you, are you following this flow tonight? I say miracles and principles. See, whatever the Lord has built, I'm, I'm responsible to build. Whatever the Lord is not building, I'm not interested in building. And that's, that, you see the balance now. So it's a miracles and principles. Not miracle or principle. Let's look at Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. You know, sometimes, let me go there. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Sometimes I think she wants to say as a pastor that would take more time to explain. So you don't go there. Not because they are not relevant. She understands. Yeah. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Yes, and saw two sheep standing by the lake, for the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their net. And I don't know why they were washing their net, because they would not they didn't catch anything. Why are you washing? Anyway, maybe caught mud. And he entered one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. 
and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. And I've taught from this that this is not the first time he was meeting Peter. And I've tried to show it from biblically looking at the stories. Peter was there when he multiplied, when he taught water to wine. And the Bible says that was his first miracle. So if that was his first miracle, it means Peter was with Jesus for some time and he left him. And that's why when he caught fish, he said, leave me alone, I'm a sinner. It was now that moment that Peter now signed him for followership. Follow me, Peter, follow me. Don't, this fish thing you are running, you are running from, I have told you, you are going to do, follow me. See, the day you saw me, like, say, say you, are, you, are, you, you are not going to be called, Pet, you actually be called Petra, Abi. Uh -huh. I've given you your calling, but you are still jumping after fish. You are still running. That's why your fish is not catching anymore. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. So you see that now. Okay. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into the deep and let down your net for a drought. Yes? And Simon said unto him, master. So you don't call somebody who just meet him for the first time, master. Master, we have toyed all night, have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, if he's a stranger, what, is you, what do you know about my word? I will let down the net. Yes? The next verse. When they had done this, when they had this done, this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. I want to ask you a question right now. What was it that Peter was doing before? Or what was it that Peter just did that he didn't do before Jesus came? David means the same principle he has been operating in is what Jesus told him to do again. Only that at this time, that's why the guy said, we have to, and if you look, the guy just want to honor Jesus. You are master. Not your nets. The guy said, let me just throw one. It's called half obedience. It was the same thing. The same skill. The same way. But what happened? The place where principles have been limited and failed before. But now, the miraculous came to compel principles to get results. Again, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. I'm just showing you an example. You're going to start a business. You're going to do profit and loss calculation. But that's not where your faith is. You're going to do all you need to do. You're going to be diligent at what you need to do. But you know there is something beyond what you are doing that will take you further. Than, are you following what I'm talking about? Yes, Now they cried, Mr. Abiyah said, they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, say, thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. So, so for example, some people don't believe in savings because they believe in supernatural supply. Think about that. That's being gullible. I, I don't believe in savings. When I need it to, it to come. That means you are living at a life of need. What if God gives you opportunity for wealth? And when opportunity for wealth comes, it is how well prepared you are. That you, are you following what I'm talking about? So God gives you an opportunity to buy a land on favor for half of the price, which you should be able to afford if you have been saving. Now and there cried a woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor come to take... I was going to talk about this woman, I forgot yesterday, uh, last week. Unto him, <clears throat> unto him by two sons to be... To take unto him my two sons to be blah, blah. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in thy house. And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad. You know, that day that Fisher, Peter caught fishes, you will be the chiefest. And you know, you know what happened to prices when supply is low? 
Now that's a bit of economics right there. Because he's the only guy who caught fish. If they were selling for five naira before, what do you think they would do with the price? Don't say influence. I said, go borrow thy vessel abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, upon thy son, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is good. Some of us are here, believing God to meet a need. Meanwhile, God is using that opportunity of you at the point of need to take you to a place of more than enough. This woman wanted her debt to be paid. But God wanted her needs to always be met. So God didn't meet the need by giving her money to just pay the debt. God gave her a business. Oil deal, oil and gas. Now the idea here is that whatever become of that woman after that miracle has to do with principles. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Are you, are you getting the point now? Yes. Let's, let's point. I'm just citing examples. I'm just citing examples. You are a tech person. You are, you are coding. After you are done coding, speak in tongues, lay hands on your project before you submit it. You are writing proposal. After you are writing nice proposal, put all the clause there, pray in tongues, lay hands on it. A person had taught me some time years ago. He said, those days, when he first started ministry, and God just he was at the level he needed money, God just told me, start writing on Facebook. He said, when I, when I write on Facebook like that, or maybe before I release it, I pray maybe an hour on tongues on it, and I release it. He said, suddenly a woman from Egypt, I've never met her in my life, started sending me 500,000 every month. So, I mean, people just started sending, from reading, how many people have read your post? No, they rather attacked you. <laughs> the same post you are writing, the same post. You typed, he typed. You send, send, he sent. You, are, you did, you say, public, he public. <laughs> Viewers, but somebody here came with a fragrance of the Spirit. Praise God. So for this woman... And, you know, my teaching tonight is very simple. But if you let it sink within you, something is happening to you. This man is a farmer. If, I think you're eating fish fry or something. Which one did you say you were doing? Fish fry. Don't just pour feed over the, over the pond. Speak words over your fish. Do you understand? Speak words. Speaking words now will now not replace feeding them. But you may never know where you are buying food. That batch of feed contains poison. But your own word preserve your own fish. So, I, so, do you see what I'm talking about now? Because the idea is that some people now say, no, I'm speaking word. That would be unbelief. I'm helping God. I might be, will I be helping God? You're not helping God. Hallelujah. Please have your seat. Let's talk about Jesus multiplying bread. Let's see, let's look into it. There's a lot of principle that if you do John chapter 6, you can see the connection of principles and miracles right there. Are you getting blessed? I'm almost rounding up. Some people don't believe. That's why she come for faith seminar. And we have registered for faith seminar, you are coming. Jesus. Look at this, look big side. If somebody is not raising the face seminar, just help me tie the rope, tie, get the rope, tie the rope of the leg of that person to the chair. It's going to be awesome. Are you believing God with me? 
that the word of God will be taught with all simplicity and clarity. Say amen. amen. John 6, verse 5 to 14. Madam, why do you open your shop around 11 a.m.? Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Sit down. Now hear this. Sometimes the enemy attacks principles. But that doesn't make you hopeless. That's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes it could go wrong. That doesn't make you hopeless. It is when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that this may he? And this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a lead to. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There's a lad here, which are five barley's loaves and two small fishes. You know, some funny people said, those days, the fishes were so big, the bread were so big, and I guess the child was also so big, because that was somebody's lunch. But what are they among so many in the next verse? And just said, make the men sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men said that in numbers about 5,000. Now actually, if you read other account, even told us they said they sat down in 50s. Planning. How do you want to feed thousands of hungry people? By the time they trample on you, the miracle will no longer be multiplication of bread. <laughs> it will be raising all of the dead. <laughs> In other words, sometimes rearranging the old thing you call a problem can make it look easier. Uh. How many of you sometimes you have clothes to wash and you thought, man, where are they? Then you try to arrange shirt, trouser, singlet. <laughs> And the moment you did that, <laughs> I think when I was younger, and I, they, they, I was try it most, it's washing of plates. <laughs> because how many minutes you just broom? broom. <laughs> you just sweep the floor. But I discover if you first arrange the plates, That means evaluate your problem correctly. You see? Let them sit down, 50 by 50, and all of that. And I love the fact that the Bible even tells us that there was grass there. Understanding human nature. I didn't just say you should sit down on bare floor. It looks like carpet grass. So nobody felt insulted. Sit down. So the man sat down in numbers about 5,000 and next verse. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and disciples to them that were set down. Jesus didn't carry the bread. I'm the bread of life. No. Structure, leadership, organization. How long will it take one person to feed 5,000 people? Remind me. But if they sit in the company, comp, comp, company of 50, and you have maybe 12 disciples, how faster will that be? Talk to me. So he did to the disciples and disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, which means if you give anybody bread after now, they can't eat anymore. I'm going somewhere with this. So. If you give anybody fish after now, they ate to the point where even the child, 
They say, Daddy, the map for Rocky Majali. <laughs> like, true to God, I'm just all right now. He said unto his disciples, Gather, no, Jesus, don't do that. Gather up the fragment. No, just take two or three fishes and pack it and multiply it. Jesus said, No, 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 it's not done that way. That he can multiply bread does not mean he validates wastage. <laughs> right after a miracle, the next thing just did was bring principle, manage his food. It must not be wasted again. Whatever they did with that food, I don't know. But I saw something with God. That Jesus can move between principle and miracle on the same matter. In a moment. God, I saw that there will be no wastage. If it wastes, what is that to you? Just take two or three and multiply it, Jesus. Now you now. Not be you. After you, now you. Sit down. Did you see what I'm reading to you here? They were all sealed. They said, gather up the fragment that remained, that nothing be lost. Again, how did Jesus sponsor himself in ministry? If you know the principle of how Jesus took care of himself in ministry, whether you're a minister or anything you do in life, it's the same principle everywhere. Let me say something to you. Value is the only legal way for money to change hands. Now, I understand the supernatural fever side. Don't get me wrong. Bishop Yopo said, when he was entering for time, and he says, Lord, how am I going to take care of my wife and children? And all that? I said, no problem. He said, he said, God showed me a scripture. He says, the laborer is worthy of his work. He said, God, is that the principle? He says, then you will not have to beg me to be at my work. I will so labor, labor will know that I labor. But sometimes when you hear that man talks about his diligence, I feel like an unbeliever. Because I feel like God. <laughs> it's enough now. Don't threaten us with this. At that age. I was listening to a man of God. And at that time, it was late in the night. He said, I can tell you where Bishop Dupo is right now. He's in his office meditating now. He said, you, I, I can tell you that he's dead now. And I'm telling you, that was late in the night. A laborer is worthy of his reward. That means the reward of a labor will not be beyond what is worthy of. The reward of a laborer will not be beyond what he is worthy of. So it's diligence, hard work, your investment into what is in your hand. Jesus was blessed in ministry by people he has impacted. Genuinely impacted. People have been healed. That is spiritual value. If they are sold unto you spiritual things, is it wrong for them to rip off your can? Are you, are you following me now? Yeah. The principle. But then you understand. That beyond principle. Beyond principle. Do you understand that in John chapter 4, at the time Jesus was talking to that woman at the well of Jacob, he was alone with that woman. I may remember. You know why he was alone? He sent his disciple to go and buy food. I said, no. No, Jesus. You that multiply food. I don't forget, the devil tempted him to toss stone to bread. If it was impossible, it wouldn't have been a temptation. 
Why buying what you can create? Hallelujah. So what is my conclusion tonight? Whatever the Lord has called you to do, whatever it is that your hand found to do, the Bible says to do it well. Be the best at it. Stop giving excuses. Refuse to be lazy at it. And don't limit what you can achieve to the limitation of those principles. That means you can overstretch principle. See, you are carried into the supernatural when there is need for it. When there is need for it. When there is need for it. Did you get something tonight? You're called to sing, right? I know you're going to pray and fast for God to spread. The Bible says just return the power of the Spirit and His fame spread abroad. I know you're going to do that. But if your fame spread and they say, okay, this girl we have been getting, let her come and sing. And you sing nonsense. As it spread, so shall it die. <laughs> Somebody saw your picture on DP. So that lady, let me even meet her. Maybe the Lord may be saying so. But the day you were met, the atmospheric condition. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's the, you know, one day, see that. I'm planning to meet with men of this church on Sunday. I want to do, I want to do what my spiritual father did for me some years ago. You know what happened? Some years ago, my spiritual father called me. He said, I want to talk to you, and I don't know whether you listen to me. Ah, when he said that, my heart was broken. I said, no. I did not listen to any man apart from you. He said, no, because your name, you know you are Baba JJ. Maybe you listen, listen to all these say prophet. I said, Daddy. <laughs> He said, can you get roll-ons or perfumes, you know? And I'm glad I had a pastor that could tell me. You could know great people that are unable to introduce you to greater people or even great people like them because they have developed capacity to, to tolerate you, but they can't withstand embarrassing you. There are people who are tolerating. They are great people. You, I can't talk to you. You know, some people, they are in your life. They, don't, they can't talk to you. They can't correct you. So they tolerate you. But they have the key to introduce you to greater people or people in their cycle. But they don't want to embarrass you. Because that, 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 there are times access become embarrassment. It's better little people know your shame. They are not ready for this conversation. Exactly like that person is saying. <laughs> How many people will you look and say, brother, I'm sorry, I heard what you're saying, but as you're talking, the smell in your mouth is terrible. <laughs> and I say, ah, I did try to say I don't brush well. I did try to say I'm not brushing well. You know, <laughs> my wife said maybe, but the person feels embarrassed. And you will have helped that destiny. Because there are some things you are praying for and has been answered. God has built the city. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's important we look good. It's important. Some of you, God brought you in now, CC, to renew your mind. <laughs> what I'm doing in Adoe Kitty by God's grace is strategic. It's not just the teaching of God's word. 
is the image I'm setting in your mind. Are you listening to me? When we grew up, people don't dress seriously to midweek service like I'm doing. Even pastors, just got one palm slippers. The question is, when is God more serious, on Sunday or Tuesday? That's the question. It's like you serve a lesser serious God on midweek service. And then you now wonder why everybody has an attitude that it's not a very serious service. Um, because on Sunday, our pastor, we, we tied... Tuesday like this, he will just come like, like they force him to come to church. Practices develop skills. That's the key. When you, when you practice something, you are developing a skill. And skills don't leave you forever. They stay with you. You're able to replicate it. I was saying that, I, I think I said it again online yesterday that if you work for a person, the least thing you can be offered is money. If you learn a skill, and if you have served in another man's business, the eventual thing God was hoping to get you into is to have your own. But do you have the skill to own one? Are you blessed tonight? Shout miracles, miracles. and principles. Say it again, miracles Miracles. and principles. So, at everything you are doing, there is room for for more, yeah. But at everything, there is room for miracles. But you are not failing at principles. Did you get what I'm sharing here tonight? It matters how you arrange your bedroom. The brother to the future spouse might be coming to visit you. It matters how you treat people around you. My covenant friend called me today. I was the one that introduced him to his wife. It happens that way. Sometimes the way God connects two godly people together is by using one godly person, or who knows both persons, to introduce them together. It's divine. It can be divine. So it matters how you treat it. Me, You will not marry that one, but you don't know whether it's the other brother of that one that you marry. But you have trampled everybody. The, you know, the vibe about some people, they need special prayer because negative vibe is too much about them. Hallelujah. Have you had things like, if men of God really believe that God will protect them, why are they getting police escorts? At least on my own part, I have done all I can do. Why did you lock your door when you went to sleep as she's yesterday? <laughs> no, 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 I don't like this. Why did you lock your door when you went to sleep yesterday night? How do you keep the mosquito in your house? Why do you do that? No, let them beat you and say, I have health now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every man and woman, whoever believed God to have a child, still did their part in the process. So, what's your responsibility? My responsibility is simply this. The way I command my fear, I will ensure that I do not make it possible to intervene in my situation. Did you hear what I just said now? Because the moment you are not meeting up with your own obligation, you are either making it difficult or impossible to do, to, for God to do his own part. What prayer should a woman who is not meeting with her husband for a baby regularly. What prayer should she pray? So that God will now Bluetooth semen and hair together. So the idea of following principles is that you are making it easier for God. 
I said, so can somebody make things easier for God? Yes. You want me to cite an example? If that guy Moses was trying to separate from his brother, he didn't shout over Moses. Do you think they will have missed out another 30 years to stay in the land of promise? If you calculate very well, God said they will stay there 400 years. All right, that guy showed 390 years. Because he went on exile 40 years. That means God even showed up early enough so that whenever all of these arrangements, Pharaoh is saying no, no. By the time he says no, 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 he will say no to the point that exactly, are you what I'm talking about? 400, everybody can go. But one stupid guy with his big mouth tied down the deliverance of a whole nation by saying, hey, is it because I didn't see what you understand what I'm talking about? Was it not somebody's confession? And when I mean somebody's confession, 10 out of 12, and even the two that said good confession, their 40 years were wasted together with the 10. Your company matters, so. We are just friends. We are just friends. Okay. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will always know, know what is right for you to do. I say you always know what is right to do. You will always know what is right for you to do. The spirit of wisdom will instruct you. The spirit of wisdom will direct you. Concerning that affair, that business, the works of your ends, I don't know what it is that you carry in your hands. So precious to you. I ask that the Lord will order your step. You will not miss out in your own obligation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you while you are busy being faithful on your part. The Lord will carry you beyond your capacity. Grace will carry you. Grace will carry you. Grace will carry you. Grace will carry you. In the name of Jesus. And I was meditating about today. He says, let your life be like this. When you are preparing for your wedding like the woman of Cana, get your wine. Should you need more? There is hope. Jesus is in the house. But don't be like others. They won't buy wine at all. No, it doesn't work that way. Get your own wine. And while you are at the end of your wine, let Jesus bring his own wine. So I'm charging you, looking forward to 2025. Begin to ask the Lord. I've been praying concerning financial breakthrough, financial dominion. What is my own principle? What area should I implement? What area should I, so that I can allow the blessing, are you for what I'm talking about, to find expression? Not just, I'm just praying, I'm praying. I say, Lord, build me. Bro, build the city. And God says, I've, I've raised the city. You have not built it. Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Were you blessed or were you blessed? Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Um, I'm just going to, we're going to give a offering right now. On, on um, when I, Thursday rather, that's two days time, we will be having faith seminar. Five o'clock. We'll have a good time of worship, and I'm going to take about one or 30 minutes to teach. And I'm going to start teaching on faith as if I've not taught it to any one of you before. So I'm going to speak it from fundamentals. From, so anybody you feel should, you want them to have an understanding, invite them. All right? Thank God the screen is there. We're going to teach. And I want, I want a full auditorium. It's in two ways. I want you to invite people. But beyond that, um, I'm going to ask them to arrange the chairs of people that are coming. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, you know, these are things that, you know, I said there are conversations you have based on congregations. Yeah. So these are things, you know, um, anybody want to come can come. Anybody want to live stream, you know, um, you can live stream for them. They want to come, they can come, anybody. There's liberty for that. Amen.
We appreciate all the guests in the house. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. You're welcome. We're glad to host you. Church, celebrate them. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Have we given our offering tonight? All right. We're glad you came. We want to see you again. Is anybody like that who is a guest tonight? Let me be sure there's somebody. Anybody? Wave your hand. Let me just. Hi. God bless you. I believe you were blessed. We were blessed. We want to see you again and again. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go tonight, you are kept. The Lord preserve you in Jesus' name. Now, hear the word of the Lord. Yesterday, overnight, as I was praying, I saw like darkness cover the earth, something like that. And the Lord said, there's a moving cloud of darkness over the earth. But for my people who shall walk in the light of my word, they will not partake of that darkness. And in scripture, Isaiah 60, right? So stay in the word. The light, if emphasis, emphasis the light on the, of the word. Someone say the light of the word. Good. Amen. Can we take the word of the house? I'm a member of NRCC. And favor is my tribe, Mark. Dominion is my reality. Spiritual decisions is my heritage. I enjoy command and supply. Now and always. I break no frontiers. There's no struggle. I enjoy supernatural speed, mysterious supply, freedom, dominion, sustainers, and lifting everywhere by the hand of the Lord. This is my year. It's still the year. Say, so this is my year. It's still the year of God's goodness. Therefore, I don't know why I have to say this to you. It is not too late for God to do something. Therefore, promotion comes to me with ease. I claim my unclaimed territories. It's my, I, I walk into the land that God has given to me. I walk into my place of dominion. I operate under open heavens and enjoy all around access, I declare that the family did not come for me. For in family, I shall laugh. I delight in the Lord my God. He grants every desire of my heart. Angels, go to the end of the earth and bring me money in relevant currents of the earth. Quicken the heart of men to favor me financially and materially. This is my year of transitioning, prosperity, celebration, and honor and favor. I enjoy supernatural rest on all sides. I am deliberately generous with the gospel. I give my money and resources for the cause of the gospel. I'm rightly positioned and I design opportunities, situations, and relationships correctly. I have breakthrough ideas. Therefore, I walk into the overflow. O oh, health, I speak to you. Give me allowance to step into greatness this year. I walk into all of this, not by, my str not by struggle, but by the hand of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before you go, do me a favor. Go to my Instagram page, my Facebook page, and share the new post between Sunday and now. Do it for me. God bless you. I love you. Have a great night. <laughs>